Hey everybody, Ed here with Smooth Life again, and I'm joined today by my friend Darren from Covermore Shelters out of Choteau, Oklahoma. And he has brought us an awesome new package that we're gonna to get to here in a bit. What'd you bring us today, Darren? This is our Covermore brand 40 by 40 double truss frame container mounted shelter. It's got a 15 ounce PVC cover on it. Really neat structure here. Um, Covermore has over 700 customers in 44 states and Ed is one of our favorites. And uh, we really enjoy the product. This will actually be our fourth Covermore shelter that we've uh, purchased and installed and you can probably see one of the uh, Covermore shelters that we have installed behind me there. So stay tuned and I'm excited to see how this goes together and how it installs on the containers. We're going to show you how it's done. All right, it's install day. We've got our crate here with our double truss structure in it. We're going to go ahead and get everything out of the crate, get it all laid out, show you what we're working with. It's going to be a hot one today. Heat index uh, better than 100 degrees, so we're going to be drinking lots of water and taking lots of breaks. So follow along as we get all this unpacked and put where it's got to go. got the crates completely unpacked, everything put into its own respective pile. Everything was packed into the case really, really well. All of the pieces are numbered, so we've got them all in their numbered piles, and we're going to start laying it out and getting ready for assembly. So this is how the double truss system goes together. What's nice is they are all packaged very well in the crate. When you take them all out, they're all numbered and labeled. So you lay them out the way that they're gonna go and start assembling your trusses. In the double truss 40 footer, there's a total of five trusses. And uh, all of the pieces are labeled. One goes in the center, two, three, and then your fours go on the ends. They all bolt together and they slide together real easily. This is how it's done. All right, and this is how easily the trusses go together. They just slide into one into another. Line up your bolt holes. It's a little bit easier if you stand all the pieces on two by fours like we're doing here. It gives you room to work underneath. And basically just drop your bolts in. And put the nut in the washer on the back side. And we basically just drop the bolts in, put your washer on, and put your nut on. And then an impact sure does make this quick and easy. All right, and then we just repeat that process piece to piece to piece. Join your one, two, three, four, all the way down. And what you end up with is a full truss, and we'll show you those going up here in just a minute.
Okay, so now what we're doing is we are assembling the flanges to the top of the container. Uh, there's four pieces that go together. You've got center flanges and you've got corner flanges, and I'll show you the difference here in a second. Basically, the way that this works, they all join each other with a series of bolts and plates, top and bottom. And basically, when we tighten that up, that's going to join the center flanges together with the corner flanges, and we do that as we go along. There are four, there's four flanges total per container, or per each side, and they all bolt together and make it a super strong structure. So basically, the difference between a center flange and a corner flange, the center flange uh, is here in the middle, and it just bolts together like this, and then the corner flange is what actually ties everything together and joins it to the top of the container. So this piece here slides into the corner here in the top of your container, and then this rotates and locks itself in, and that's what ties this along with some extra bracketry to the top of the container and makes it super strong. Okay, so here's a better view of how all four corners lock into place with the factory installed turnbuckles. So this silver piece that you can see inside slides down from the top and you wanna turn it 90 degrees like I've done here so that it can't lift back up or come back out of the pocket. The way that you add tension to that is with these bolts here. When you tighten these down, you can see I've got a little bit of an air gap here. It's pulling that up against the bottom so it's got it all locked into place and it's not going anywhere. All right, so now we're attaching the base plates that are gonna hold the trusses in place when we go to set them in place there. So these just line up with existing holes in all the bracketry. Drop our bolts in, one underneath that there, and washer and lock nut on the bottom side. Do that for each one. And then all we're going to do is tighten these four down, and you do this for each one of the base plates. They're all numbered so you know exactly where they're supposed to go. Get them all in the right location. Again, the little impact driver makes short work of this. hanging the trusses with this big piece of equipment that we've got over here to my right and we'll show you how we're going to get that done. This is how the base rails attach to the top of the containers. It comes with a series of brackets that attach the base rails and clamp to the side of the container. And you can see in the visual here, I've already got one installed. The clamps go underneath the base rails 
and tighten up that way. And then this basically slides in till the outside edge is flush. When you're putting this on the container, you've got to make sure that you find the proper location so that you can get into the base rail and slide it in against the container. What's nice about these brackets is it comes with several different options. They make different kinds of containers. The one on this container is actually very, very shallow. They also make containers where this is actually fairly deep. This worked out great for us because they offer, when they send this, it comes with two different sets of bolts depending on which style of container you have. So in our case, we have one container that is the thin lip, and then our other container has the very wide lip. So uh, we had everything we needed to get these clamped on. We just slid these in, tightened everything up, cranked it down against the container, and the pressure of these bolts is what actually holds everything together. So once you get your fabric stretched over the trusses and get it in place, you're going to take your bar that originally runs through this pocket and we need to make an incision right through the fabric here. Make sure you're just going through the fabric pocket that holds the pipe in place and then we're going to run a strap through it and run it through the installed tie downs and ratchet everything down. And this is what holds everything nice and tight. You've got a series of these on both sides. So it's a quick and easy way to get this all tightened and secured. So basically I'm just gonna, you need a sharp pocket knife. I'm just gonna make a little cut there. Then we'll run our strap through. all the way through here. I like to go ahead and true that up so it's about even. Run it through the ratchet like so. And then it's just a matter of tightening down the ratchet. You'll notice when I'm tightening this up, it's gonna start pulling this bar down and that's gonna put a lot of tension on the fabric, make it nice and tight so it doesn't flap around in the breeze. That's all there is to it. Okay, so once you've got your fabric all installed, tensioned, and locked in place with the ratchets, you want to go ahead and make sure as the last pieces of the puzzle, you install your lacing. And what this is, is uh, the ropes that come with the kit, they're designed not only to help you pull the fabric over when you initially pull that over the trusses, but when you're done with that, you take the same ropes and tie them in want to make sure that you lace through these factory eyelets to the ends to help center everything and lock it in place. And you're going to do that on both sides of the fabric. And last but not least, once you've got your fabric completely laced in on both ends, you want to make sure that you install the factory ratchets and tie downs that come with the fabric. This webbing is in this end when you get your fabric. It's all installed and ready to go. You just need to find a location for the ratchets that come with the kit so that you can get that all locked in and tightened down. You can put it on a number of different ways. I'd opted because this base plate is so substantial to go ahead and drill a hole in it, mount it here so everything stays in one location, put your webbing into the ratchet, tighten it down, and basically what that does is it folds it over nicely and holds it nice and tight as it goes over the trusses all the way around. All right, job complete. You can see behind me here that we've got our double truss 
cover more roof structure all completely installed and set up and ready to go. We've got our RV underneath there already, got our little home base set up. We use this as temporary housing while we're building our home and it works great for that, keeping shade, keeping everything underneath it so we don't have to worry about rain and everything else. So a couple of tips for installing your structure if you're gonna do this yourself. Basically, you wanna make sure that you read the instructions, you want to make sure that you get everything out of that big metal box that everything comes in, lay it all out, categorize everything, get all your tools out. It'll make your day go a lot smoother if you're not chasing parts. So one thing that is super critical with the install is making sure that you read the instructions that come with your kit and make sure that your containers are spaced appropriately for what your kit calls for. It's going to make the trusses sit like they're supposed to on top of those containers and make for a much easier day. So a couple of really good friends, some equipment if you need it. If you're doing a tall truss like we did here, that equipment sure can come in handy. And it's totally doable over the course of a weekend. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it helps you. And we'll see you on the next one.